Universal Asset Management here in Tupelo, Mississippi, a place that knows a lot about aviation, and specifically a lot about the Boeing 777s. The resident expert here, Brooke, the senior vice president, Michael Kinney, thanks so much for taking the time with CNN. We've Thank heard a lot know. about flaperons in recent days. We're standing in front of uh, one of the Boeing 777s you have here. First off, where is the flaperon and what is it? Nick, the flapper on is located right here between both the inboard and outboard flap. So that middle portion right there, that, that small, about piece. six and a half foot piece. That's right exactly there. right. Uh, and the flapper on is a flight surface. So it combines both an aileron and the flaps themselves. So it helps navigate the plane, helps uh, it uh, control its landing, sort of, sort of. Yeah, it actually extends away from the aircraft um, and it gives pilots more control over the aircraft at slow speeds. Take off and landing. one right here in front of us to get a little bit more detail about uh, what the those investigators in Reunion Island are working with. How would they be able, Michael, to tie this uh, flapper on back to that specific uh, MH370 flight? What are they looking for? The, the most distinct way to do so, uh, and concretely, is through a data plate. The data plate is found right here on the side of the aircraft. It's going to list both the part number and the serial number of the unit. But we saw from these uh, photographs that we've been seeing emerge out of Reunion Island that that data plate is, is not there. So what, what other identifying characteristics are there on this flight? It's potential that there are other serial numbers, there's other identifying marks in the unit itself. Which we've seen, we've seen that number. On, on a part of the uh, on a part of this flapper on you, you know you're an expert in Boeing 777s you know a lot about the specificity of this there are certain things that stood out to you isn't that right when you saw these photos first emerge yeah I mean if we compare the photos themselves directly to the unit you can see a lot of similarities between them um, especially in, in the side section of the aircraft um, but I think what is key to note is that the linkage a lot of the actuators that actually tie it to the airplane itself are not there and not only not there look like they were forcibly removed. And there's something also on the other side that you were showing us yeah. just a little while ago. This is something that is only specific to Boeing 777s. Is this this mounting portion right here? Yeah, if we, if we again can compare pieces and pictures, uh, this is a picture of the right side of the unit. The actuator and the hinge that ties it to the aircraft on the 777 is specifically found right here in this location. What about this part, Michael? I mean, this this has emerged a, a year, about a year after the flight first disappeared. Uh, it, it, is this particularly buoyant, a particularly buoyant portion of the aircraft? That's a really good question. It's This part itself is made of composites. Um, it used to be that these components would have been made of an aluminum or a metal alloy. It's a composite material. It's lightweight. It's also hollow. It's, it's just got ribbing structure on the inside, and in fact, some sealed compartments. So it would float or, or wouldn't sink all the way to the bottom of an ocean or, or any other surface. And last question, I mean, you know this aircraft. You, you've studied it since you were eight years old. What do you think, looking at the pictures and looking at this, what we're looking at here, this flap around? I think it's pretty promising that this is from a 777. I think comparing pictures, comparing the side structures, um, we're getting pretty close to, to being able to identify that this came from a 777 aircraft and hopefully for closure of the families of H3. And I'm glad you brought that up, Michael Kenny, Senior Vice President, Universal Asset Management. This is, as much as we've been talking about uh, debris, Brooke, in the last uh, couple of hours, the last day or so, this really is about closure for the family and hope that this could lead investigators to something more.